there's a surprising GPU we really have to talk about. It's going to be coming next year. It may beat all of the NVIDIA and AMD GPUs as with price to performance, and it may actually be more available. Let's see if this will hold up and what we have to look forward to. And if you're building your PC, you're going to need a Windows key. Remember to check out today's sponsor, cdkdeals.com. Yes, these keys are even going to work in Windows 11 whenever you upgrade to that. Very simple process. If you use my code CC20, you're going to get a nice discount at checkout and it's going to get rid of that annoying Windows watermark when it's not activated. So check out CDK deals for your CD key needs. And remember, it will work with Windows 11. Now back to the video. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Remember to subscribe and smash that like button. We talk about GPUs, CPUs, computer building in general. All right, so there's a GPU that sort of people were talking about, but I think it's really being underestimated. That's gonna be the new Intel Arc, the Alchemist and that line of GPUs. Now, we really can't underestimate Intel. Look at the release of 12th generation Alder Lake. Whatever you may think of them compared to AMD and and AMD did give them a pretty bad beating the last several years with their Ryzen processors, they're at least really trying to get back in the game. Look at their pricing, 589 for the 12900K, which supposedly is going to have the fastest gaming performance out of any chip out now, and the multi-core performance should be pretty comparable as well to a 5950X, maybe a little bit less, but after all, it is a little bit cheaper. So it shows you that Intel is trying to get back in the game, trying to gather the mind share of of consumers again after pretty much losing badly for you know Ryzen for the last several years. The last time they really sort of had a rebuttal to the AMD Ryzen CPUs, maybe 8700K. After that, everything was sort of the same with the 9900K. 10900K, a good CPU, but only 10 core, didn't really go very far. And then the 11900K, probably the low point of the recent Intel CPUs. I think they really just made it that much worse so that their new lineup could look better in comparison. But the reason why I'm mentioning all of these Intel sort of innovations, if you will, recently is because CPUs no longer are the only thing that they're working on. They're also working on GPUs, which if you guys have been following the market lately and not living under a rock, is an absolutely massive part of PC gaming, especially the last year where availability was first really terrible. And then when GPUs started to become available, prices skyrocketed. And we're not even talking about secondhand scalper prices from your friendly neighborhood scalper. We're also talking about actual MSRP prices. Now, they can blame, you know, tariffs and, you know, high demand from both crypto miners and gamers, but at the end of the day, the demand was just way too high and MSRP pricing is extremely high right now for pretty much all of the GPUs from Nvidia and AMD. So I'm sure Intel was looking at all this very juicy action and Nvidia and AMD having pretty much record profits selling as many GPUs as they can make, while Intel's chips pretty much were on the shelves. Nobody was buying the 11900. Even when available, the cheaper Intel CPUs were really glossed over, um, even when they were a pretty good price to performance for people wanting, especially the new AMD Ryzen 5000. So I'm sure Intel was having a lot lower sales because of this, and they recently got a newer CEO, and they probably figured we need to jump into the GPU game. Now, I'm sure that this is something that they've always considered and that they were always focused on in the past, but I think that recently, because of all the shortages and they saw the amount of demand, that's probably when they really started taking it seriously. Not to mention that their server market and the gaming PC gaming market that we enthusiasts build definitely took a hit recently as compared to AMD, which pretty much ate their lunch for the last several years. So makes complete sense that nobody can keep up with GPU demand. Intel wants to throw their hat in the ring and see what's going to happen. Now, of course, it takes time to develop these type of technologies, these, you know, separate GPUs. They've had their integrated GPUs in their chipsets before. Every generation generally has them, especially with, you know, the regular Intel motherboards. Even AMD sort of have, you know, has a similar thing with their processors. So integrated GPU was one thing. Performance is always very poor. That's mostly so you can diagnose your system if you don't have a GPU or something temporary like that. But finally, they're getting into a competitive GPU race. Now, we could look at what AMD did against NVIDIA with the RX 6000 series and maybe take a few lessons. Now, 
we thought that AMD was going to have a you know comparable GPU to Nvidia maybe up to a 3070 or 3080 level that's pretty much what people are talking about with Intel right now they're saying that next generation ARC is going to be a competitive GPU, perhaps 3070 level, 3070 Ti, a little bit under a 3080. That's the same thing people thought of AMD before this generation, but AMD pretty much shocked us in the beginning with the 6900 XT being efficient, 300 watt TDP compared to 350 plus on the 3090, and it pretty much matched the 3090 in traditional rasterization. In many games, it certainly gave the 3090 a run for its money. Now, this isn't to say that ray tracing and NVIDIA's DLSS don't completely steal the show when those are implemented, but at least AMD surprised us with a, a pretty good GPU. Original MSRP was supposed to be $999, which made it look pretty good compared to a $1499 3090, but unfortunately, as time has gone on, we've seen that that price pretty much skyrocketed. I've even seen 6900 XTs for like $2,600. So the price to performance proposition there pretty much ruined by all of the GPU shortages. It would have been a very good, popular, competitive high-end GPU, but unfortunately I don't think as many people go to it just because it's almost impossible to actually find it at $999. So my point in bringing up AMD here is look at Intel right now. They're just saying, oh, 3070, 3070 Ti level performance. But we have to remember a couple of things. These companies are not going to just let you know or, or leak too much information about their very high end products. That's really where a lot of the technological innovations are and where a lot of the difficulty is because you need a lot better manufacturing processes. The, you know, the, the more bend and the higher quality, higher performing that the GPU itself is going to be it's just much harder that's why they sell you know less 3090s than a 3060 ti or a 3070 so it makes sense for them to kind of keep it under wraps and then that's the big piece let's say when they reveal it next year and they're like oh look at this gpu it beats an nvidia you know 3070 and it costs this much yay we're making progress and then they can say oh and one more thing we have this gpu here which costs you know as much or a little bit less than a 3090 and absolutely beats it and then they get good press and they show that they're their technology is actually good. That's what I think is going to happen. A big company like Intel, I don't think they're going to be playing just to, you know, compete in the mid-range. They saw that AMD did that for a long time. For example, last generation's 5700 XT, while a decent GPU, it was sort of, you know, had issues with drivers and it never really went, you know, very far to be able to, you know, beat the higher end Nvidia GPUs like a 2080 Ti or anything like that. It was more like 2070 level, you know, not as much 2080. So I think Intel really has a message to send that they different. They've even said themselves that AMD's sort of run is over as it pertains to the CPUs, and I'm sure they'd like to say the same to NVIDIA. Now, for us, it's going to be good to have competition in the market from three different GPU manufacturers. As we see, NVIDIA pretty much can do whatever the hell it wants because everybody wants their GPUs, both crypto miners and gamers, so they sell it at literally whatever price that they put it at because on the second-hand market, they often go for two to two and a half times something like a 3080, 3070, the very popular GPUs. AMD doesn't have quite the same street cred, but because of the shortages, their GPUs, for the most part, have also flown off the shelves, aside from the ones that got priced way too high because of the third-party AIB partners. Those are the ones that you'll generally find in stock. I'm talking about the 6700 XT. You find lots of those. 6900 XT, for as good as it is, you find lots of those, just because for the price, the price-to-performance ratio really is pretty poor when it's over you know fifteen hundred or over two thousand dollars at nine hundred ninety nine dollars they would have sold a boatload of these sixty nine hundred xts but unfortunately price is way too high so they still sell a lot of gpus almost as many as they can make when it's a fair price so intel coming into the game is going to put another gpu into play even if it's not as powerful as the high-end nvidia gpus having something there in the mid-range to almost high-end surely is going to help fill in the gap and hopefully they can have some better manufacturing by the time it comes out remember their gpus i think are still going to be made by tsmc so it's not like it's going to really have a huge effect on 
on all of the semiconductor shortages and anything like that as opposed to if intel was using a different node they're using their own fabrication so they're still going to rely pretty much on a lot of the same sources that amd has to uh, rely on and eventually nvidia may switch back as well from samsung so we're not too sure if that's going to be a bottleneck in the future i'm sure they've ramped up production a lot and a lot of bottlenecks occur during shipping and during other manufacturing delays so that's yet to be seen but I believe that the Intel GPU, if Intel really has their game together and they're better now than they were before with the CPUs, 12th gen Outer Lake, even if you don't like it or if you think it's a little expensive still, the pricing is better than we had thought and the performance seems to be pretty good and it's actually a bit innovative. It's not just repeating the same 14 nanometer process. They have a lot of stuff going on with the cores, efficiency cores, lots of next gen technology with PCIe Generation 5, DDR5, RAM, um, lots of cool stuff happening there so you can imagine that having their motherboards and their you know cpu ecosystem they're going to want to pair it really well with their intel gpus in a lot of cases look at what happened with intel and windows 11 they had much better optimizations and discussions with microsoft than amd did amd had really bad drivers where gaming performance was affected so even though intel has suffered with the mind share and like amongst gamers and enthusiasts they still have a lot of control control over their own ecosystem they have a lot of control over their industry they're still a very large company perhaps one that has made a lot of mistakes and fallen off their high horse a little bit but that means that when they implement a gpu there are certain technologies that they can pair with their cpus much like amd uh, does with their you know smart access memory and things like that but intel could probably go even further with those integrations and make their gpus outperform other gpus in certain areas because they have control of that pipeline between CPU, motherboard, and GPUs, maybe a little bit on a bigger scale and more tightly than maybe what AMD would have. And of course, NVIDIA has no control really over CPUs since they just generally make GPUs. All right, guys, so I hope you liked the video. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button. Now, let me know what you think down below. Are you looking forward to this GPU or are you a little bit apprehensive? And I'll see you guys on the next video.